up you guys back with another video this video is going to be a little bit different we're going to do some fishing and at the end i'm going to show you how to tie a new fly that i've been kind of working on this winter that i'm calling the phantom nymph um, i've just been experimenting with different winter flies recently trying to find something that's like a good all-arounder that represents a lot of different bugs um, and that can be fished a lot of different times throughout the day but we're gonna jump down in the water and uh, see if we can find some fish on this fly it's an awesome day. You can see we got some fresh snow, but let's get down to the water. Let's see if we can find some fish in this squirrely water. That's a good fish. That's a heavy fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Woo! That's a good fish. That's a good trout. What a pretty fish that is. I'll hold that up for you guys to see. That is such a cool fish. You can see that fly in the corner of his mouth there. Get him back in the water. Good fish. Let's see if we can find another one. Okay, we're gonna move back down. See if there's any back here that wanna play the game. There's one. I think this is probably a white fish. But we'll see. Yeah, it looks like a little white fish. But they like them too. They like the phantom nymph too. Hey, 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 bro. Hey, bro. You can see it right there corner of his little mouth will get him back in the water he gone okay we're gonna move back even further okay there's another fish looks like we found the pot of white fish here there's a little white fish into the net there. Get this guy unhooked. He is being difficult. Hold him upside down. A little trick with white fish. If you hold them upside down, they lose it and they stop biting. Let's just see. There we go. There's a fish. This is a good rainbow here. Let's see if we can just keep him upstream from us. And we'll just kind of work him back. Kind of hold him in that current. There we go. Got him. It's a good little rainbow there. Oh, maybe you can't see. <laughs> He's gone. I don't know if you guys saw that, but. That was a disaster. Long distance release. Got him in the net, he came out of the net, and then popped off. <laughs> Darn it. That was a cool fish. Sun's on the water now. Let's see if that makes any sort of difference. There's a fish. Is this a rainbow or a white fish? Let's see. Oh, another white fish. There, just right there in the corner of the mouth. And we'll let them go. Okay, I moved down river just a bit to a new spot. I want to see if there's any trout in here, so let's jump in and see if there's any more. Okay, I'm moving up a little bit. See if they're up in this like 
soft pocket here. There we go. There's a good fish. Let's see if we can Let's see if we can land him. It's a big fish. I'm trying to hold him right here. Gosh, that's a heavy fish. Okay, we're gonna be going on an adventure. Isn't it? Here. Got high water here. It's bad, you guys. Okay, I'm just kind of holding them here. This might be the spot where I can get it done. That is such a sick fish, you guys. Holy cow. That is such a good fish. On the Phantom Nymph. Yet again. It's a really good fish there on the phantom nim. Whoo, whoo, buddy. What a cool fish. What a cool fish. And there he goes. Whoo, yeah. Okay, well, hopefully, you guys saw how effective this fly can be. We're down there in the water, we're catching fish with it. You can see we caught a lot of white fish and a few trout in there, um, but it works really well. So, I would encourage you guys. To tie some of this fly up and get out on your local water and see if it works for you i think it will but uh yeah let's get into tying that fly now okay so in the vise i've got this daihiku size 16303 great hook i've been using this a lot killer hook doesn't drop fish it's awesome i'm pairing that with a copper bead that's a 2.3 millimeter copper bead i tie this in all different size beads and colors i've got some simplify brown nano silk this is just brown color I'm just gonna go ahead and start my thread right there behind the bead lock that in come in and slice that off I use bad scissors for that because that nano silk will destroy your scissors so we're gonna work our way back here all the way to the bend of the hook where the barb would be basically where the flat part of the shank stops and it starts to bend down make a wrap there and then we're gonna take a Coke de Leon medium speckled pardo feather, and we're gonna put a tail on this fly. So I'm just gonna take a few fibers from that, maybe, um, maybe like five or six, peel those off. You can see I've got them there. I'm gonna take them in my left hand, grab the top of the hook, go over, do a pinch wrap, pull down, do a few wraps, and you can see they're way too long there. But what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're just going to pull that till they're about the length of the shank. And we're going to bring that up forward. And then we're just going to cut off this excess. So like I said, I tie this in a lot of different colors. Um, but this combination is uh, copper bead and amber wire. So now I've got some amber wire here. And I'm going to take that piece of wire and I'm gonna tie it in right behind the bead on my side of the shank, just like this. And I'm gonna wrap about halfway down and then I'm gonna take my pearl, Pertagon body from Simperfly, this is iridescent pearl. And I've taken a piece of that and I'm gonna tie that in now after I tie in that wire, just like this. And I'm gonna wrap both of these back just like that to where that tail is. And then I'm gonna make touching turns back up to the head of the fly. I wanna leave a little gap behind the bead right there because I'm gonna um, add in some other materials and I wanna leave some space. So now I'm gonna take my iridescent pearl and I'm just gonna make touching wraps all the way forward. You could do this with the rotary vise, but doing it like this because of the video. Then we're just gonna make those touching wraps forward, just like this. And then we're gonna capture that pearl tinsel, just 
like that. Come in and trim that off. Now we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna come in and we're gonna make some open turns of the wire for the rib of the fly, just like that. And we're gonna make some real tight turns here um, because we want that wire to be really locked down in place so that it doesn't come loose when you're catching fish. Uh, make sure that's nice and tight. We're gonna helicopter this off. It can take a second. Okay, that's off of there. So now you can see we've got our tail, our, my, our pearl tinsel, and our rib on there. Now the next, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our UV resin. This is thin hard. We're gonna add a little bit of that onto that body, just like that. Come in with a, a bodkin or something, and we're gonna kinda spread this out a little bit. We don't want a ton on there, just, just enough to basically secure everything that we've added to the body so that it doesn't come off when we're landing fish and catching lots of fish so that it's nice and durable. We're gonna come in and hit that with our UV light here. Get it all nice and cooked. Okay, now, um, so I've got some squirrel dub here. This is UV tracer squirrel dub and the natural fox squirrel color. Color's not so much important here. I'm gonna take a little bit of that and I do mean like the littlest amount of that. And I'm gonna just dub on a little bit of it and come in here right behind the bead. And the reason I do this is so that in the next step when we add our CDC, um, those fibers will stand up. So it kind of keeps those fibers from laying back onto the fly. So now we've got that, now we need to add our CDC collar. Okay, I've got some CDC feathers here. These are from Folding Mill and the natural gray color. So I've got one feather here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this feather, pull off the bottom pieces, and I'm gonna come in and kind of stroke these fibers back and with my scissors, I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna chop the tip off. I just want a portion of the feather for the collar. So now with my um, dubbing loop tool, I'm gonna to come in here and I'm gonna create a dubbing loop. Just like this. It's kinda of hard to see, but essentially I've created a loop here. And I'm gonna take that CDC and I'm gonna stick it right in between those pieces right there. I'm gonna use the other side actually. So I'm gonna stick those in just like that. Drop that so it's held in place. Then I'm gonna take my scissors and come in and just trim that off. And now I'm gonna spin this. So we got a nice little rope of CDC. I'm gonna come in with my um, my brush here, make sure those fibers are combed out. They can get a little bit knotted down sometimes. So now I've got that and I'm gonna brush all these back and I'm just gonna wrap, just like this. This gives the fly movement. Really like that about this fly. Come in and capture with my thread here, make sure it's nice and tight. And then we've got that fully captured and then Take our scissors, come in here, trim off this extra. At this point, we're gonna take and pull these fibers back. We're gonna grab our whip finish tool and we're just gonna get throw in a simple whip finish here and cut that thread off. Okay, now we're gonna switch to our fluorescent orange UTC 70. And we're gonna add a hot collar to this. So what I like to do is I take the thread and I wrap it around my finger, just like this, so it's wrapped around tight. And then I come in and I add it just like this. I'll go once around and then back over, then once around and then back over and then I just yank and it breaks off. So that's the easiest way to get a new thread on there without building bulk is to rip it and tear it versus cutting it. So now I've got my Loctite here. I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of super glue on there now that we've got this collar on there. Just like this, just a little bit to that thread. 
and we're gonna make a few wraps over and then two whip finishes here, just like that. And then we're gonna come in with our th scissors. Boom, done. And then the last thing to do is to take these fibers, pull them back and with your thumb, just break them off. So they're shorter, just like that. And that is it. You're finished Phantom Nymph Fly. It's killer in the winter. You can tie it in a bunch of different colors, um, different weight beads. Um, I primarily fish this from a two millimeter up to about a, a three millimeter bead. Um, and I'll pair it with a silver bead or uh, copper like this or a light pink, something like that. I leave the rib the same color throughout all of them, which is the amber color wire. And it's just a really killer bug that uh, emulates, you know, mayflies or um, midges, things like that. Great winter pattern, been catching a lot of fish on it. Anyway, that's the finished bug. Get out on the water and fish it.